G'day guys, Chronicles of Solid here and welcome back to Adventure News where we talk the latest and greatest in adventure and dual sport motorcycles. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first bike I wanted to talk about today is the KTM 390 Adventure. It's hugely popular in the comments section below and I've seen plenty of uh, discussion online about it. KTM have announced that they're releasing it early this year. Uh, what we know about the bike is it's a single cylinder. It's also going to make 44 horsepower, has 37 newton meters of torque. It'll have 200 millimeters or 8 inches of ground clearance. One of the disappointing things is it's going to weigh 170 kilos fully fueled and it's also going to have cast wheels with a 19 inch front and a 17 inch rear. So that does suggest that it's going to be more a competitor to the CB500X or the G310GS rather than a spiritual successor to the 640 Adventure of the past. So those of you hoping that this 390 Adventure will be the unicorn dual sport we're all looking for, I think the evidence is in the name. It's called an Adventure, so it's clearly not made for technical riding. We've got a heavy weight, 170 kilos, we've got cast wheels, and we really don't have enough ground clearance for technical riding. But what we do have is a fantastic overlanding small displacement adventure bike. This would be the kind of bike I'd be looking for for solo adventure trips where I want that road comfort but I'm also worried about taking it off-road and getting it back up. Now when I had my GS once I dropped that I just about crapped myself trying to pick the bike back up because it was so heavy. A bike like this really takes that uh, anxiety out of the ride I guess so for those wanting to downsize this is going to be a great option but I don't think it's going to be the unicorn we're all looking for. So a viewer recently asked me if I think a 390 Adventure R will be coming out from KTM. My answer is probably not, and the reason for this is a positive one. So KTM recently had a shareholder meeting where they discussed all their future products that they're going to be releasing, and one of the pictures that leaked onto the internet is their product line coming soon. So what we can see in that picture is they've now got an 890cc parallel twin range. They've also got a 490cc parallel twin range. It looks like they've got an adventure model. They've even got an enduro model. So that segment of people who are looking for a par parallel twin enduro bike, that's really going to uh, hit that market, I think, because I know I'm always hearing guys going, I wish there was an enduro bike with a parallel twin, it'd be fantastic. So I think that will really cater to that market. Uh, we also are getting a single cylinder 250cc versions and a 125cc. I think they're definitely aimed for the big Asian market and other emerging markets where small displacement is king. Now what surprises me the most is that the media outlets haven't picked up on down on the bottom is a 390 Enduro. I have no idea why they haven't picked up on this, but to me this is the most exciting revelation of the whole thing. Uh, we've got a single cylinder. The Duke 390 weighs 153 kilos, so if they can shed a little bit of weight, that means we've got a single cylinder that's sub 150 kilos. It's EFI. If they put it on good Enduro suspension, we're going to have ground clearance that we need. We've basically got a modern DRZ in the making. Now that's really exciting news because that possibly answers the unicorn question for a lot of people. The only unanswered question is will KTM make it that way because it is a more budget orientated motorcycle so will they go for the entry level motorcyclists or will they take the WR250R where it's good enough to do some light enduro and uh, basically everything else. If they can hit that mark, I think this will be a fantastic bike. Sticking with Husqvarna, they've just announced they're going into production with the Norden 901. We saw that in 2019 at the International Motorcycle Show. So it's using the KTM 790 parallel twin engine. They'll be boring it out to 900 cc's. We also know that it will have a 21 inch front wheel and an 18 inch rear. That means great tyre choices. There will also be spoke wheels, so they're really leaning towards the adventure off-road segment. 
They have said that it's going to be the lightest of the segment. That isn't big news. They're all heavy pigs in my opinion, so it's not really going to be a difficult thing to try and make it lighter. How much lighter is the question? Probably not much, so don't get too excited. So the looks of the Husqvarna I tend to appreciate. They're very clean lines. It's a little bit of the retro styling as well, so I think it's really nice. In my opinion, where KTM have gone with their looks lately and with some other of the adventure bikes, it tends to be a bit transformer abortion and they don't tend to have the cleaner lines that this Husqvarna is displaying. So I'm liking where they go with this, so let's see what happens. Okay, so sticking with the International Motorcycle Show, the Caddy came out with a very interesting model based off of their 1100cc V-Twin Scrambler. They're calling it the Desert X, and it's got a 21-inch front and 18-inch rear, both spoke wheels, so uh, really great options for tyre choice. And the most interesting thing here is their fuel management. They've got a huge tank up front and they've also got a rear tank. So fuel storage is going to be massive. So fuel anxiety will be at a minimum if they ever produce this bike. So I think that's a great concept. I do think they've tried to go for the retro look here and base it on their old elephant bike that they made in conjunction with Kajiva. So it'll be interesting to see how much of that is kept if they do go into production. But a very interesting bike nonetheless from Ducati. So moving on, we've got the Harley Pan America. It is a divisive motorcycle. Some of you love it, some of you hate it. That is the reality of Harley these days. Uh, what we do know now is that it's going to be going on sale in late 2020 and early 2021. We also have power figures. So this has the 1250cc V-twin revolution motor in it and it's going to be making 145 horsepower and over 90 foot-pound of torque. Now that clearly shows that Harley are going straight for the GS and straight for the Super Tenere here. They're also working with Brembo on their brakes so they're going for high-end material so this is going to be a big budget, big adventure tourer. They're also being quite coy about the weight here. They haven't said anything about it in this media release. They didn't mention anything about it at the motorcycle show or any other material that they've released on this bike. I think we can expect that this is going to be quite heavy given Harley's track record. It's going to weigh quite a bit. It would be easy to start Harley bashing here, but the reality is their backs are against the wall a bit. Their demographic is aging out. They're uh, mostly marketed towards baby boomers for the most part and they're getting older and stopping to ride motorcycles. So this Pan America and other bikes like the 950 Street Fighter are really an attempt to bring in a younger and a different market. So it'll be really interesting to see how Harley goes in switching gears here really and looking for new riders while still trying to maintain their uh, retro simplified V-twin image at the same time. So this is very interesting for Harley to see how they will survive the next few years. Triumph has announced an update to its middleweight. The Tiger is going to be bought out to 900 cc's. They're claiming 10% more power. They're also saying 20 litre tank, Brembo brakes, updates to the cornering ABS and the traction control. It will have a TFT screen, so lots of shiny new updates. Of course, this isn't a massive revision. It's more like incremental uh, improvements. I've ridden the Tiger 800. It was a great bike, so any changes to make it better are only going to make it more and more rideable. So good on your Triumph. Sticking with lazy updates, we've got Moto Guzzi adding a new model to their lineup. The V85 Adventure Bike now has a touring model. Basically, Moto Guzzi has just bolted on a whole pile of their touring accessories, hard bags, a touring screen, heated grips, and some other bits and pieces. While it does seem a bit lazy, it might save you some money if you are going to make those mods anyway. You could save some coin by just buying that model instead of uh, incrementally updating. So maybe some good news there. One of the things I thought I'd do with the end of Adventure News is open it up to viewer questions. So if you do have any questions for me, just post them down below and in the next video I will try and get to them. 
Often some of your questions are very highly related to what I'm discussing anyway. So if they're questions that I think have relevance or are helpful to others, I will try and answer them in the future. So post down below if you've got any. Now a viewer has asked me my thoughts on the Tenere 700 and the KTM 790 Adventure. Now that they're both released and we've both got real world testing videos to watch. The problem is I don't want to say too much because I haven't had a chance to ride either. Basically I think they're both great bikes at a glance. I've watched plenty of review videos, especially the Tenere for the price point looks like a really good bike. I do still have some qualms with the weight. I will caveat that with saying the weight is heavy but it is pretty good for the category that they're in. For a middleweight, for the Yamaha to be sub 200 kilos is fantastic and I think the KTM fully fueled is just over. So if we see a market trend that keeps heading down with the weight and these guys started it then I'm very pleased for these bikes. So that wraps up this episode of Adventure News. If you've got any comments for future videos, please leave them below. Or if you just want to share your experiences off-road, I do read all the comments in the comment section. Let me know what you think of the green screen as well, as it's a new thing. Also, I'd like to thank you for just sticking with the channel, really. I know I haven't posted regularly recently. In my previous video, I go into that. But thanks for sticking with me and moving forward you can expect more regular videos. I've been Chronicles of Solid and I'll see you in the next vid. Catch you later.